Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. I'm your host, Brando, the Weed Commando. And uh, who, you know, who am I? What, who am I? Why, why am I out here making videos about weed? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I don't have no, I'm not claiming to be anything special here. I'm not like, you know, I'm not the guy that did anything remarkable and I mean I'm as a freedom fighter I've never even been in jail I never even got a weed charge my whole life imagine that um got thousands of friends and people that probably have met me along the way or whatever and that's cool um but most of my life I've been kind of a kind of on my own kind of like only have a couple friends and don't really like talk to too many people because I was pretty much growing weed <clears throat> and when you grow weed you can't have friends you can't have people over you can't tell people what you're doing uh, I learned that when I was really young so um, who am I I don't know there's people that know me though there's people that have talked to me in person <laughs> thousands of people know me know, know have met me hung out with me got a lot of friends but beside all that i i really have been an activist my whole life no doubt about it all right if it was only as simple as going to the hash bash and seeing what somebody had to say uh when i was 15 or reading emperor wears no clothes before that or sending money to normal <laughs> before i could even become a member um all these things aside i don't i'm not trying to brag about anything i don't care i don't care and i criticize everything because i i think i'm saying things that not too many people say and i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that i did make a video back when uh <clears throat> before the ballot proposal got voted for and we had uh this guy named uh Arlen Meek Meekoff, who's a state representative. He's a Senate a state Senate majority leader and he's on his way out. Um I'm not sure exactly what happened to make him go on his way out, but he's on his way out and as he's leaving, he's gonna try one more time apparently to uh change the will of the people's uh ballot proposal that's going to become law hasn't even became law yet we're still a few days off uh here he is he's <laughs> literally trying to do what he tried to do before and i made a video about it he was before he like actually was pushing to get a floor vote on some you know watered down thing that would have basically legalized marijuana with the with the ballot initiative that they already had they would have legalized that and then in this same lame duck session that they're in now they would have went ahead and hammered out rules and then passed them no problem because if that was the case all they would have needed then was a regular majority vote and they would have had it no problem so his so that idea that he has to do that is so unpopular that it didn't even fly then in the Senate. He claimed he had enough votes back then in the Senate. I said I called bullshit on it. And when I at the time I made my video, it wasn't really released to the public exactly what he wanted to do to um alter the the proposal that we had on that we're getting ready to vote for. And I said, the things that are obviously the things that he would want to get rid of or change, he would want to get rid of the home growing. <laughs> Check. He would want to get, uh, he would want to get rid of those micro businesses. Check. And furthermore, I, I don't know if I haven't read his actual bill, this one twenty one two four three bill, but. I would guess that he was trying to change the whole sentencing structure and the decriminalization thing. My prediction was that he would get rid of a lot of that. 
I don't know if that's one of the things. I don't want to say anything about that. But the the final thing I said was that he would probably um, make the licensing go through the board that the medical marijuana goes through, which is a bureaucratically installed. It's a bunch of bureaucrats. And two people on the board are in question. One is a former state police sergeant who is a complete prohibitionist. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then the other guy is a lobbyist who clearly was involved with the process of making the rules. Now all of a sudden he's on the damn board. So obviously some people he knows are going to get licenses. And this thing in the background, I've been report I've been saying this all along. This is a Republican the Republicans that were trying to take over the whole thing already. They fly under the banner of Responsibility Council of Michigan. Well, they're <clears throat> And if anybody wants to tell me more information about some other shit I'm not mentioning, there's a comment section down below. Don't be fucking shy. You know, there's people spreading misinformation out there and getting me roped into it. I don't care. I don't really care what's going on behind the scenes. I know what I can see right in front of my face because Michigan's a corrupt government and you can kind of see what they're doing. They're not shy about doing it. And what they did is they had you know, lobbyists write the rules for the medical marijuana licensing. Straight up. They've been doing it all along. And if you look at what they're trying to do, they're trying to shut down all the small businesses. And they're trying to cut the caregivers out of the game. And they say, oh, we're only trying to be fair to the people that paid all that money for the licenses and had to go through all the hoops and jump through the ladders. Yeah, I, well, what about the fairness to the people that have been uh, accustomed to taking medical marijuana overage, the caregivers, which is the leftover weed after they give all their patients what they have, uh, you know, basically because of the stupid little arbitrary rules about how much fucking weed you're supposed to possess or not possess, caregivers are pressed to try to get rid of everything they got as soon as the fucking harvest comes in or even before it dries, according to recent court rulings. So I know what the fuck's going on in Michigan, man. I pay fucking more attention to this shit than most people, all right? Now, if there's some shit going on behind the scenes, maybe if, if you don't think I sh I, I'm qualified to, to comment on this shit, then fucking tell me about it. Fucking ridiculous, man. Um, Republicans are the corporate takeover, all right? All the Democrats do is they try to get some taxes, they actually, the people that are the Democrats involved in this process, and I, you know, I'm just going to give credit where credit's due, they actually kind of made some roadblocks for the corporate takeover. That's what the fucking Republican guy's trying to get rid of. How is that, how is that getting by people, all right? And I'm not a Democrat, and I'm not a Republican. I'm not, I'm, I don't, watch my videos, you know what I am. <laughs> you might as well call me an anarchist at this point. And you might as well call me a one-issue voter. And then the issue is this, and these guys, you know, I've never seen either from either party, except for the Republican in Vermont, anybody legalize marijuana from either party. <clears throat> Every, they still think it's a death nail for their campaign later on to be for legalizing marijuana. I don't even understand these politicians anymore. They're so soaked and steeped in donor money that we, we don't have no say in anything they do. They're not representing us. And for sure, this guy's not representing me. Um, this, this, I ran into this from uh, <clears throat> somebody I follow on Facebook named Brad Forrester. He's a old school Michigan normal board member. And I tend to, to take what he has to say to heart. I've met him a couple times and I'm, you know, I'm pretty impressed with uh, some of his his positions on this issue uh, i'm pretty much like i agree 100 percent with a lot of what he says you know um so anyway he's talking about how the senate bill 14 sb1243 introduced november 29 2018 by outgoing senate majority leader arian mikoff is brutal and frantic attempt to rewrite the entire michigan regulation and taxation of marijuana act mrtma the MRTMA was overwhelmingly approved by voters 56 to 44% just over three weeks ago. The MRTA hasn't even gone into effect yet, and Senate Majority Leader Mikoff is leading the charge to amend the law in such a way that it would not be recognized as the same law 
that voters understood and voted for on November 7th. Mikoff's proposed amendment would essentially amount to wholesale rewrite of the law. Language in SB 1243 would eliminate the micro-business license option, check, a key point of access in the industry for small business owners, especially minorities, and transfer the voter-approved regulatory structure into a monopolized version, a uh, monopolized private industry for connected Lansing insiders, which is what I've been saying all along. These same Lansing insiders that are helping write the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act had a little bit to say in the writing of this, these regulations, and now, you know, Mikoff thinks it's not enough. <laughs> he wants to go farther. Mikoff would also outlaw unlicensed home cultivation or home growing, which, remember guys, that's in Michigan, we just passed at all over 21 years of age, can grow up to 12 plants, which is a key component of the MRTMA, which is the consumer's only leverage against inflated commercial prices, inferior mass-produced cannabis products, and legislators like Senator Mikoff who it appears will stop at nothing to obstruct responsible voter-approved cannabis reforms. Perhaps the most horrifying aspect of Senator Mikoff's amendment is his morbid desire to place the Marijuana Licensing Board in charge of approving recreational licenses. That change would grind the recreational marijuana program sh straight to a halt. That's what happened to the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act. And like I keep saying about the MMFLA is that it is an attempt by the lobbyist to crush out all the old school people that were sticking their necks out running dispensaries and to break up the old system of uh, all these caregivers being able to take their overage, their extra medicine to the dispensaries which basically propped up the dispensaries and it gave caregivers a good outlet for this extra product that was basically written into the law in 2008. <clears throat> so basically the MMFLA was what the Republicans wrote in Lansing in 2016. It passed no problem and it was heavily written with nobody involved in the process except the donors except the lobbyists except the people that would probably later on down the line get licenses and now i'm not even saying that that's the case i'm saying they wrote this like that the mmfla they didn't care if their homies got a license or not that's not even what it was they just wanted to make sure that all the people the activists that have been fighting to legalize marijuana their whole lives they just wanted to make sure they stepped on them and squished them out of the game that's it all the court rulings and all the the ways that they've been busting people for medical marijuana, whether it's dispensaries or growers or whatever, or patients, all the precedences that they've set up to now have all basically been going towards a corporate takeover, uh, having a hand in overall like sentiment. Or maybe it's just prohibitionists that have made these decisions and these prohibitionists that decide who they're going to arrest. To set examples, the MMFLA is an evil piece of shit that's got to get taken the fuck out of Michigan. And I'm going to do a little clip uh, in a minute, but apparently there's a new emergency rule that finally, first time I've ever seen it in paper, on in black and white. I don't think it's been passed yet or whatever, but it basically has been agreed upon that. Um, I'll get into details later, but. You know, this whole thing where caregivers can take uh, their overage to dispensaries. And when I say dispensaries, I'm talking about the old school, the people that are still unregistered, or provisioning centers, there's even rules for that. But it's it's just a temporary rule. And what we need to do is we got to fight to get that to be a permanent rule. This is the closest we've ever came to letting caregivers come out of the darkness. Now, why I'm so concerned about that is because a lot of these caregivers are people like me that's been growing weed their whole fucking lives. So we, you just want us to not be involved. You're like, oh, you, 
you, you, you did this thing when it was illegal, so you're an outlaw and a criminal, and fuck you, you can't, you can't have any part of this shit. That's what they're trying to do. That's what the MMFLA was heavily handed trying to do, and is still trying to do. And these people are still trying to do it until the last second when they don't have power anymore. As the new administration is coming in, and the Democrats are coming in, and they they realize they don't have the ability to just like streamline these bullshit regulations and fuck us over. Because the Republicans aren't going to have as much power. And, you know, I keep running into people that act like I'm some kind of partisan. I'm not. I don't fucking care for politicians at all. Either party, any party. There is no party out there that represents me. There's no politics. Look at this Mikoff guy. He, here's where he's he represents. See that little dot on the map? That's his town. This is West Olive. This is where he, I don't know. This just doesn't look like a place that, that represents my idea of what should go on. This person over here in West Michigan in the middle of the Bible Belt. These people over here hate weed. They, they hate stoners. They hate the culture. They don't think marijuana is medicine. I mean, everything bad about people that don't like weed, that's what this guy represents. He don't represent anybody else. And that's why this is unpopular. And I'm going to emphasize once again that this guy, Mr. Mikoff, is on an island. He's on a fucking island, guys. This isn't nothing to worry about. Is anyone worried about this? I looked through the comment section of this. I looked through the comment section of a couple other posts. And people are acting like this is something to worry about. This ain't shit. This is about as much to worry about. I told you when I made the video before. Don't worry about this. But worry about it more now than after we pass the prop one you know why because now they need 75 percent super majority to do anything they're they they do not got that will will governor snyder sign that i don't know it to be honest i don't think he would i don't know maybe he would convince me otherwise someone say whether he would or not who knows what he would do He's been pretty pliable when it comes to marijuana legislation. He hasn't, uh, without the, you know, Bill Schuette gremlin, he basically didn't do anything to medical marijuana the whole time he was in office. And then at the last minute, he signed that, that 2016 bullshit into law, which we have to repeal and replace. There's no doubt about that. The MMFLA has got to go. It's fucking bullshit. We can legalize what was already happening before. Nobody was complaining about the system that was in place before. You want to make sure people go to the lab with their weed? Fine, do that. But don't fucking tell people they can't go to the market with their extra weed that's been growing weed for 30 years or more. Give me a fucking break. You, and you expect us to believe that these fucking giant warehouses are all of a sudden going to be like not using pesticides, not using chemical fertilizer, churning out quality shit. Um, I don't know, man. I have to, I'll believe it when I see it. Anyway, the licensing board is politically charged and barely functional. This is back to Brad Forrester's post where he's talking about the licensing board that, like I said earlier, there's a former state police sergeant on it and there's also a former lobbyist on there so we what are we supposed to think about this and when the new administration comes in they get to pick a whole new board and it's just it's a bunch of bureaucrats that are in there to control like a control valve to control who gets licenses it's bullshit back to the uh post by brad forrester since january they have only been able to review less than 200 applicants only a cold-hearted masochist would put a, that bunch in charge of another, even larger program. And I remember interviewing uh, somebody from My Legalize, Chad. Or, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, when I inter did the interview with, for My Legalize, um, Colin is his name. 
And he told me that basically Laura is going to be in charge of the licensing process, but it's going to be more streamlined, kind of like when, you know, if you were a patient just getting a med card or, you know, there's going to be some license requirements. There's not going to be a licensing board that handles like, oh, up, thumbs up or thumbs down. It's basically like if you want to get a license, you can get a license unless your municipality tell, uh, legislates that you can't get a license there. That's And it's up to them to set up rules if they want to charge you for whatever, you know, taxes and fees that they have. So it's a little different beast, guys. This isn't like the Medical Marijuana Act where your local town had to basically let you exist. And then later on, the MMFLA where you had to pay them and get a license from them and comply with their rules and regulations and then go to the state and hope that they get to you. Meanwhile, Laura hasn't got to 200 people. A hundred of them have just dropped right out of the game completely. So now there's a hundred people left that still don't have licenses, still haven't been even visited. Or they're, they're, they have a license pending and they have to do the rest of the process. A lot of people, there's even untold more people than that that put licenses in and haven't been able to get to the next part of the process because they haven't had an inspection from Laura. So... All around, there's no fucking way we would trust that board to do a bigger project. Completely awesome point. Cannabis advocates from across our state and the country are reacting swiftly to the news of this deceitful lame duck scheme to undermine our victory. We didn't fight this hard and come this far to get snookered by Mikoff at the 11th hour. We will mobilize and exercise every option to defend our gain on November 6, 2018, regardless of the time or expense involved. The cannabis community is unified in this course of action and has resolved to expand every resource to defend the integrity of the MRTMA. Now, I don't know how much of that I have full-throated endorsement for on that, on, in regards to that statement, but I will say that I agree wholeheartedly with the sentiment that there is absolutely no way that we're going to stand for this now as far as fighting it i mean what do you what can you really do you know what can you really do to fight that <laughs> um you can call your rep you can call your senators you can call me tell him how you feel you can you can do all that and i highly recommend that you do um, but if you're me and you've been paying attention to this kind of shit for a long time and you've been paying attention to this Mikoff guy, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen, man. Cause that's a lot of political capital that you're willing to waste for Mikoff. It's no big deal. It says he's the outgoing guy. I don't know if it's cause he's term limited and it's up, uh, the gig is up for him or if he got ousted because someone got elected over him. I don't know what's what his story is, but the, the the thing I do know is he's gone. In January, he's out of here. Um, so whatever, you know, like he he wants to throw another wrench at the machine, and the machine is pretty. It's chugging along now without missing a beat, man. Uh, I don't I don't think a little wrench is gonna fucking stop this machine. Um, the thing about this is how you can tell. That there isn't a large commercial, you know, thing in the background lurking, ready to pounce on Michigan's new marijuana facilities that's going to be open to anybody over 21. If there was, where is it? This is the only people I'm seeing chime in about this are fucking activists. All right. That's it. Now, does Brad Forrester, does he have skin in the game? Is he. Does he stand to get a big license and have a big and make millions of dollars off of weed? No, not that I'm aware of. And neither is anybody else that fucking has been fighting for this shit for decades. And if you just came to the fight recently, um, cause the libertarians or whatever, there's people that just kind of got involved with the legalization thing at the last minute, it feels like. And, but they have this dictation of, of how things should be and, who's who's 
got the authority to speak out on it or whatever. I don't care about any of that shit. I've been doing what I've been doing my whole life to try to make sure every time there is an opportunity for me to do something in the effort of legalizing marijuana or spreading information about cannabis or hemp, I've done whatever I could. All right. And now I'm on fucking the internet for the last two, three years, just (laughs) saying the shit that nobody else will say. All right. I'm on the record saying it. Mikoff can fuck off. All right. That's what I think of his proposal. And I think his proposal is as dead as fuck. It ain't going nowhere. And it ain't going to get no three quarter majority and no lame duck session. It just ain't. All right. Someone got a, you know, if you can down below, just draw me a diagram of how you think that that bill 1243 in the Senate is going anywhere. And by the way, um, let's see. I pulled an article. Let's see what's going on here real quick. Uh, let's see. We have State Senator Coleman Young disputed Mikoff's. He's a Detroit Democrat. Coleman Young II disputed Mikoff's characterization that the law lacks regulations and called the bill a slap in the face to voters who approved it on November 6th. Okay. So, basically, recreational marijuana law is set to take effect on December 6th will allow adults over the age of 21 to grow up to 12 plants each in their homes for personal use, which Mikoff argued could encourage sales through a black market instead of licensed retailers. Quote, you could have an argument whether you think it's criminalized or not criminalized, but at the end of the day, it needs to be regulated. At the end of the day, if you're still sitting here thinking that there is any fucking hope of an argument for criminalization, you're fucking crazy. You're crazy, Mikoff. You're gone. You're, you're out of your mind. I don't even know how old this guy is, but this is just absurd. This sounds like something like a 70 or more older person would say that only has heard reefer madness and only believes that shit. Mikoff's proposal would also create a new licensing board that would be appointed by the governor, much like the medical marijuana board established under the 2016. So here it is. I guess I was a little bit off, but still a board is a board. If you're going to have a board of bureaucrats sit there, they're the ones throwing wrenches in, in machines and deciding who's getting licenses and who's not gatekeeping. I'm afraid not, buddy. We don't want that. Um, so what else do we have? Uh, here's a quote from somebody. Quote, the last thing Republicans should be voting on is adding more layers of government to anything, said Josh Ho- Hoovy, spokes. Uh, men for the medical or for the Michigan coalition to regulate marijuana like alcohol. And I completely agree with that. And like I said, um, Republicans, they always bill themselves as the small government party. <laughs> and if you, if you're not a, a person that's on either team, you can, you can critically analyze the bullshit that these guys try to sell you real easily. And I'll tell you this, the Republicans are the big government party. They're the biggest government you ever heard of. They're, they love the military industrial complex. They've never met a fucking pharma fucker that they don't want to give money from. Prison industrial complex, same thing. I mean, you you can't even find uh, more corruption than in the American Republican Party in world history. It's just not possible to find it. So there's that. And you're always talking about small government. What? Show me some proof that they're for small government. The only time they want small government is when it's to regulate their billionaire buddies from fucking making more money than they already do off of everybody else without paying anybody anything. Josh also note, uh, noted that states allow residents to brew beer at home for personal use. Quote, there's no reason you can't allow people to grow their own marijuana, Hovey said. And the thing about the brew beering, the beer brewing shit, is that there's there's these arbitrary limits like oh you can only brew 200 gallons a year blah 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 but guess what there isn't nothing to monitor that 
if they come in and they find a bunch of beer making supplies, they're not going to be like, well, let's see your uh, inventory of how much beer you've made this year. They're, they don't they're, they don't keep track of none of that shit. So it's it's not even a thing. They don't care. Why should it be any different than for weed? Especially if we're quote unquote regulating like alcohol. Why the fuck is there any penalties for any extra weed being grown or had or whatever? Why is there even fucking limits? I mean, reasonable limits. People don't even know what fucking weed is. You know how much work it is to even maintain what limits they're telling you you're allowed to have. <clears throat> Mikoff urged colleagues in the GOP-led legislature to adopt a citizen initiative before it made the ballot to make it easier to change. <clears throat> but it didn't happen. So go away. <laughs> Any laws approved by the legislature can be amended by a single majority vote. And, by the way, it would have it been totally legal. They would have had no legal problems whatsoever if they took the ballot language and just passed it outright whole cloth and then later on in this lame duck session that we're in right now they could go in there and fucking do whatever they want just gut that shit right out like a pig getting ready to go for the roaster shove an apple in its mouth and pass it with a simple majority which is no problem for them because they have super majorities in the houses in michigan unfortunately that's not going to work for what they're trying to do or what he's trying to do. I don't know why I said they. He's the only one. He's on an island. Republicans did not employ the strategy on marijuana initiative but did adopt a minimum wage and paid sick leave laws, which the Senate this week voted to significantly scale back. See, that's what they could have done to this too. They did do it to minimum wage and paid sick leave because they knew that Democrats were coming with a Democratic governor and that they were going to try to push for these things. So... Besides the ballot initiatives that died in an attempt to try to get signatures, <clears throat> these issues are front and center for Democrats. Uh, we had we had the votes to adopt and amend the marijuana law too. Mikoff said Thursday, "I just don't uh, didn't have a willing partner in the Speaker of the House." Aha! While amending the law may now require a supermajority in both chambers i'm going to make an effort because i think it's that it's important i really do for the safety of our communities what a dumb ass what a dumb ass um there was another take on this that i saw somewhere i don't know anyway um yeah, that was it. Uh, there was another... There was the... Uh, I had a, a quote from the... The House... Leader... Who said that they were definitely... <clears throat> not on board... With this. And they would not take it up in the House. And that's pretty important. Was that... It might have been Brad that said something about that, but... When, they, when the House leader says, yo, I'm not going to take that up, that's pretty bad news. And even if they did put it to a vote real quick, um, I don't think it would pass, not with no 75%. So this is nothing to see here, guys. Sorry I took so long to bullshit about it. That's all I got on this. Uh, stay tuned because I'm about to drop another video talking about this caregiver shit. Uh, but that's all I got. Have a good one. Peace out.